What's up guys, welcome to NBS Connect, your show where we talk about lifestyle, tech, what's trending, what's hot and what's not. It's your boy Danze, aka Dijan. And Sabrina, aka Sabrizi. Today we're going to be getting into some self-driving tractors, as well as talking about the most popular social media platform. Also, we'll be talking about cinema, uh, where we review Snowman and the rest of it. So, we'll see you guys right after this. Okay, so Sabrina, mm -hmm. this week I'm on the internet and I'm scrolling through a couple of things and guess what I find? What did you find? You know, we, uh, we have self-driving cars, do we have we? self-driving bots. We do? I've even seen some hovering stuff. Have you seen them though? No, they... like on the internet. Oh. Uh, I've seen drones mm -hmm. that are very responsive even without the command of the pilot. Right. And now we have self-driving tractors. Okay, so how do these self-driving tractors work? So there's a company called Build Robotics that has released uh, tractors that are going to be excavating, doing almost all the farm work and the heavy lifting mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. So whatever technology and coding they're putting in there, we, risk, we now currently, we, we now don't need farmers to actually dig and do heavy lifting. Which I'm, I don't think I'm very okay with because you're going to replace human labor. Yes. And I think you're going to lead to unemployment. Though... And like, let me tell you what. Mm. Me, I feel a certain type of way about tractors in general. Mm. But now a tractor that does not have a human being in it, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I feel comfortable with that. You guys have watched The Terminator. Eh? <laughs> Skynet is real. It's about to come. Do you know, uh, what, do you know what comes to mind when I think of these self-driving tractors? Mm. Transformers. Ah, okay. Like, what if that she, thing becomes she, she, optimal? She's a millennial, so she hasn't had a bottom meter. <laughs> what is that? So anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's an innovation. I think I think it's quite it's quite it's quite smart. Yes. I think it's going to make work easier. So now I think the human element needs to just work around it, and all of us have a very good working relationship with these machines. Um, I think in the long run, definitely that's the direction which the world is moving towards, and it's a great invention. However, I'm still skeptical about a few things, like definitely the fact that there's no human being in that thing. Mm. So how will it tell that an accident is about to occur? How does that? Human error and computers, they're supposed to be more accurate. We live in a changing world, and farming is changing with it. Our growing population and a greater environmental awareness means farmers need to produce more food, more sustainably, from the same amount of land. It's ultimately technology that will make the difference. And CNH Industrial is at the forefront of this change. We set out to take technology in a different direction that will allow farmers to integrate new technology into existing fleets and give them access to real-time data wherever they are. We believe this technology will, in the future, change the face of farming for the benefit of all. This autonomous tractor concept, conceived by CNH Industrial's innovation team, is truly independent and driverless. It is controlled and monitored remotely, freeing up skilled labor which can be redeployed. It offers the possibility of true 24-hour working eliminating operator fatigue and enabling a different approach to field work. So anyway, jumping away from uh, the robotics, Windows, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft has unleashed a new update for the Windows 10. Yeah. And this is specifically supposed to enhance or give a, see, a tap on the back for the VR, uh, VR system or side of things that they have. Um, they've partnered with Dell, they've partnered with Lenovo, they've partnered with HP okay. to push this out. You know what VR is, Sabrina? I was going right? to say, please, speak <laughs> English. I don't know what's happening here. VR is virtual reality. Um, if you've watched a couple of our episodes, you've seen us do a VR for PlayStation and Sony. Mm -hmm. But Microsoft has their own version and it basically takes you into the virtual reality of things. Gaming, uh, medicine like we saw at some point, yeah. and a couple of other erotic things that let I wouldn't me, want to jump Let me ask you into. a sensitive question. Is, mm. Do people still use my, uh, Microsoft? Like, are people still interested in downloading Windows 10? Will they be? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> people use PCs. I I'm, know, I'm, I'm, personal, but... I'm personally, I'm a Mac person. But um, see, there are people like the gamers, the mm. old timers who still have the, their uh, Acers and whatnot. So that's, that's their system that they're driving on. Okay. Mm. It's a different scenario when it comes to mobile and when it comes to desktop uh, application. 
Okay, so Windows 10 is going to be like something that you can use with your virtual reality programs and whatnot? It, they, no, there's a specific update or upgrade for it. So speaking of, uh, I spoke about uh, mobile eh? and you know, I know you thought about Windows and Android. Yeah. So apparently Snapchat has something called so, coming yeah. up. Actually, um, these guys carried out a research. Some guy called... Open Snapchat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some guy called Piper Jaffrey carried out a research where he did a survey on teens. Mm. Mostly, most of them were around 16, 17 there. Okay. And we have to be honest, those are most um, cell phone users nowadays. And mm. apparently, the most popular um, platform, social media platform, is Snapchat with 47% saying they prefer Snapchat to any other platform. Snapchat. You're not a teenager. I don't Follow more. You're, you're not supposed <laughs> to be, you know, you're, you're uh. not a teenager at dancing. But apparently it's the most popular um, platform. Then it is followed by Instagram, mm. then Twitter, and then Facebook. For no, the then followed by Facebook, Instagram, then Twitter. For the teens. Yeah. Well, um, makes a lot of sense. It's a, it's a share video. Uh, share picture platform, yeah. which is a trend these days. You saw, you saw WhatsApp evolved into that sort of uh, platform whereby someone can share their story the whole day, where they can share pictures of what's really been key in their day and whatnot. Yeah. So it would make sense. That but, feature was created but, yeah, exactly. for you. Eh? Uh, but personally, <laughs> yes. I, um, I'm not a Snapchat guy. One, because of what? What? Be <laughs> because of data. You're not a Snapchat guy? <laughs> If you're wondering how a mobile app like Snapchat could possibly be worth billions of dollars, you're not alone. Snapchat, which is known for making messages disappear, is immensely popular among teenagers, but the app eludes some people. Because I use okay. it, no, I use it, but uh, my biggest problem with it is it consumes a lot of data, first yes, of that all. It does. Secondly, I'm not uh, that much of a guy who shares all these things out there. See, the best Snapchat, so the best Snapchat users are supposed to be very, very uh, open to sharing the rest of their lives. All right, but you, let me tell you what. I, uh, I, having used Snapchat for the period of time that I did, I, I get it, I understand why people like it, because it alters a lot of things about the way people look. But this same research... She means filters. Same survey, mm -hmm. yes, I mean filters. <laughs> this same survey said, in as much as it is the most it's the most popular, it is most likely mm. to cause mental health problems among these people who like it so much. Things like depression, you know, self-doubt, I don't know, like all those, those uh, mental illnesses Wait. are most likely to stem from these social medias that people are dying over. Oh, I thought Snapchat specifically. Well, Snapchat, Instagram, especially those two, because they focus mostly on you living the life. You know what I mean? You have to enjoy, you have to show the you world that slay. you've arrived. You have to slay. <laughs> 20 to 25% of all smartphone users in developed countries do. And 30% of all millennials who regularly use the internet also use Snapchat daily. And while YouTube may still be king for now, Snapchat users view 10 billion videos every day on the app and spend an average of 30 minutes every day in Snapchat. It may have had humble beginnings as an ignored iPhone app with only a handful of users, but smart branding, wise business decisions, and an instinctive feel for the youth market have helped transform Snapchat into a social media juggernaut. Not. Facebook may still be leading the pack, but with over 150 million users and counting, it may not be long before it's seeing Snapchat in the rearview mirror. Anyway, I think locally, um, our, our ecosystem, our online ecosystem, Facebook will always be number one for the younger, the older, and whatnot. And for us who like Facebook Zero, <laughs> <laughs> there is Twitter. Okay, the way I rank them, or the way I've seen. Uh, the research I've done be uh, before has been yes. Facebook followed by Twitter and then Instagram and then Snapchat comes in left. left. The ones that take more MBs like, uh -huh. come, like, come last. Like someone has always told me before, mm -hmm. Snapchat is designed for a certain class of people in Uganda. I don't think in Uganda, in the world, it's designed for a certain market <laughs> which has access to so much, you know, good internet and cheap internet. I'm on Snapchat and she's not on I'm, Snapchat. I'm not. <laughs>